Hello, and welcome to The Last Step. Yeah, I'm, uh, as Kristen said, I'm being beamed in from Camas, Utah here, and Frank, can we pin Frank on the screen? Frank is in the south of France. Yeah, it was funny, actually, as I was, we had a bunch of stuff going on here, but as I was getting ready for the show today, I noticed there was, uh, there was a different feeling for me, Frank. It was you know, sometimes there is a bit of nervousness or whatever, but this week there wasn't, there wasn't any of that there because, uh, because we've been staying connected. For those of you who were actually watching the show two weeks ago, gave Frank an assignment and uh, it was to read Setting the Goal every day. And we went over a little paragraph from uh, one of the 12-step books, which was about Kind of going through your day, like anything that was going on, you kind of connect with, and this is a sponsee sponsor relationship. And I'll have you know, Frank called me at least twice a day for the last two weeks. We spoke pretty much all the time, and you know, and you could feel that, like even coming into the show, there was like there was nothing there, there was no nervousness, like oh, what are we going to talk about any of this? Because a term that you may hear a lot of us talk about is linked. You know, who's my link? I've been linked with someone, and that's really just what me and Frank have been doing and you know, this idea that minds can join bodies cannot, that's a line from the course. And it's really that we're linked in mind and it's like he calls and shares, you know, it's clearing out whatever's in the way so that we can have true communication and see actually what's behind everything that we think we're talking about. And it was funny. I had, uh, when I was thinking about it just before uh, we went on the show, I was, I remember I went home, I was here in Camus <clears throat> and I was linked with Kirsten at the time. And I went home for a week or a week and a half back to the East Coast. And for five days, I had her in mind strongly. And I was like, and I remember the day, like, I just stopped thinking about her. Or she left my mind. Within two hours, Kirsten called me. She's like, hey, what's going on? I lost you. It was like, literally, like, <laughs> like, like this unseen communication had been dropped. And it was like, it just blew me away. I'm like, wow, it is so powerful to, to keep that, that connection. And uh, yeah, so me and Frank have been, have been keeping that connection. And I actually had a few things um, when I was thinking about this. So we've been talking and we've been talking about a few different things uh, throughout the week. And some of the, uh, you know, the gift of connecting with someone, you know, a sponsor or, you know, having a link in community or anywhere, a mighty companion, you have this you have this ability to be able to, when you have a perception that is just, you know, overwhelming, you just make the call, you know, you call someone, you say, Hey, this is what I'm seeing. I need to see this differently. And this is the practice that we get into to actually offer to the Holy spirit, a different interpretation. So, you know, I read these, this same, these same pages I had, and then I was drawn back to the same section that we talked about, I think three or four weeks ago, which is in chapter 11, which is the problem and the answer. And then I went on to the, the next section, which is the, um, the Holy Spirit's curriculum, which is the judgment of the Holy Spirit. And those two sections with everything Frank was talking about, he had a few uh, experiences that he may share about and uh, we can go into. But the first thing that I was, I was drawn to was, uh, this is actually out of the 12-step book that I used to uh, read. And it's at the beginning of what we talked about last week or two weeks ago when we talked about, you know, we joined at the end of the day. Again, joined is just another word for linking up with a brother. It's going beyond the words to actually connect in truer communication. So we always use that word, joining. And it's nothing more than, yeah, actually having a true conversation with someone and talking about not the weather, of course, you know, actually going into what's going on for me and you, you know. <clears throat> and when me and Frank talk, none of that even, there's nothing that comes before it. It's like we're straight into it. It's like Franco calling, he goes, this is what's going on. And it's straight into <laughs> these guys out in the boat. I had this reaction to them because he has this true calling. He has this desire to go deeper. And it's like, we don't want to talk about, you know, the rest of the stuff. We want to actually see what's going on with our minds so that we can have this state of peace. And that stuff we talked about last week, it made me think of this, um, this line, or this, it's a little paragraph and it says, this thought brings us to step 10, which step 10 is a personal inventory, kind of the thing we were talking about that we would do at the end of each day, going through the things, where were we selfish, dishonest, where did all these things crop up so that we can hand them over and as a practice, hand them over to a sponsor and you know, a mighty companion. 
So the thought that they're talking about here is actually what comes right after the promises, which the promises are Bill Wilson, who wrote that 12 step book. It's his way of talking about what a spiritual experience is. And it was like, you know, not regretting the past and all that. I had read that, I think, week three or, or four of the shows that we did. So this thought brings us to step 10, which suggests we continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. At this point in the book, everything's a mistake. There's no errors or sins or, well, errors or mistakes. We vigorously commenced this way of living as we cleaned up the past. We have entered the world of the spirit. This is probably my favorite line here. Our next function, we always talk about function here too, and our true function is forgiveness, but function can look like some of the stuff you just saw in the last show. When they, uh, Toronto was walking around with Ricky, it might look like pushing a wheelbarrow. It might look like doing things as a practice, as a backdrop for our true function. And in the 12 step book, it says, our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. And I always love that, like this idea of growing in understanding because as an addict alcoholic, I always wanted to be understood. It was always, no one understands me. And it was always this, constant like cry for that and then when i could actually shift my mind you know, they talk about entering the world of the spirit i could shift to this a desire to understand like whether it be you know the guys in the boat that frank may talk about and the the other people that are surrounding us that are becoming these our perceptions you know it says this is not an overnight matter we definitely know that don't we frank it should continue for our lifetime. Continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. When these crop up, we ask God to remove them at once. We discuss them with someone immediately. And that's what we've been doing. We make amends if we believe we have harmed anyone. Then we resolutely turn our thoughts to someone we can help. What would you have me do? And then this is the line. Love and tolerance of others is our code. And the 12-step we always say that love and tolerance is our code. And that's what me and Frank had been talking about this week. He had had some, you know, a few experiences with people and it led me to this other, uh, this other thing, which I think I had read at one point, And it was uh, this idea that our perceptions, like we cannot trust the body's eyes. And, it, and I love this, this paragraph. It's really short and it's children perceive frightening ghosts and monsters and dragons, and they are terrified. Yet if they ask someone they trust for the meaning of what they perceive and are willing to let their own interpretations go in favor of reality, their fear goes with them. When a child is helped to translate his ghost into a curtain, his monster into a shadow, and his dragon into a dream, he is no longer afraid and laughs happily at his own fear. This is the world will end in laughter when we start to see that they are all just curtains and shadows and dreams. And uh, yeah, with Frankie, he had a few, uh, a few things come up and it was his, his curtains or one of his ghosts was, uh, I think a group of uh, drunken Frenchmen that pulled up next to him as he was meditating <laughs> on his boat. Then he, uh, you know, this is Frank's, Frank's world. And then he has uh, a billionaire from Qatar parking his 130 foot yacht next to his house. <laughs> But it's like I asked myself when I read this section, what are my what are my ghosts? What are my dragons? What is it that I'm actually fearing? And it looks so much different for each of us. So, yeah. And then, yeah, maybe you can share a bit of uh, of how your week is going, Frank. Just just as you say that the, the Qatari guy is coming back just now. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I did have a I did have a. Um, you say you weren't nervous. I was a bit nervous because I thought, you know, this is, uh, you know, we do a lot of exposing and, you know, I'm getting good at that. But now, you know, I have to really, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the, what do I do with it? I have to, to see the holiness in my brother. And that's really hard. And yesterday, that boat situation, it was impossible, you know, I was, reading my lesson and um and i was doing my lesson and then these guys and, and and it was so apropos the lesson because i'm on the lesson i can only condemn myself you know and here come these guys and you know they drive past me and they, you know they all have beer and, and and then i thought you know the first thing i condemned them how vile you know <laughs> and then they started the noise and um and i started praying and, and 
and so you know okay now it's you know it's like the Mexico thing when I came to Mexico and the the, the, the guys in front of my window it sort of replayed there and I thought okay so now I'm here and um, I mean not that this is a big problem I could have pulled my anchor and gone a little further but I thought let, let me use this situation because there was a whole display of uh, really uh, behavior that I condemned, you know, and, and, and I went um, really into it and tried not to, you know. And as the more I tried, the, the more I was, see, I can't fight it. So there is a moment when I have to really let go. And I started praying. I said, okay, now this is here. This is obviously presented. Let me, uh, let me see past that experience, you know, let me see it in everybody. Let me see, uh, you know, my innocence in my brother. And let me see their innocence in me. And, um, and so that's, you know, that, that, that's the action. That's the action I, I'm, I have to take. And that's, that is the action I'm taking. But I have this, you know, I'm really sometimes tor tortured by these attack thoughts about because, and I think it's pretty, pretty common in, in the 12 step. People really get on my nerves, you know, all of them. <laughs> it's these guys or the Qatari guys just pulling up and he's going to block my old view with, <laughs> with this thing. I mean, they're all silly things. But, but you know, one day uh, I was telling you that I was, uh, you know, with Lisa. In Mexico and she was driving and somebody was was cut, trying to cut in and I got so angry and I said to, to Lisa you know I'm really angry and she said well yeah that's your rage and then you know we pulled behind the guy who's obviously trying to push us off the road to be you don't understand I want to kill that guy you know and and, and so that is um, that is uh, you know that's sometimes what I'm dealing with so it's so so it is hard for me and uh, often when I say that in community, I say, no, it's not harder for you, but, but I find it's a challenge uh, uh, to, to really get past that rage, you know, that I rage I have against the world, and it's just a world that I have created, and I know it's only in my mind, and that helps me. This morning I had this, um, you know, as I was reading the part you just uh, read and also did my, my lesson, I, um, you know, a visual that helps me a lot about it is, is the, the ocean, you know, to say, you know, I, I, I think I'm a glass of water in the ocean. You know, God is the ocean and I'm part of the ocean, but I still think there's a glass, you know, and I have to take that glass away and then, and, and it's an ocean of love. And then I melt into that ocean, you know, I melt into that infinite love. And it's a visual that really helps me and, and works for me. And then everybody else, you know, I see them literally melting into it, you know. And so there's this guy, friend, a good friend of mine, actually, I've known him for a long time. He's in, in the 12 steps. He's been struggling with money. And for years now, I have been giving him money every three months or so because he can't make uh, ends meet ever since he moved back to California. And now I'm learning about people pleasing, about guilt and all this. And the last time he asked, he said, you know, this is the last time. So here he comes three months later and he's asking again. And I said, no. You know, I, I said, no. And that brought up a, a lot of stuff for me. It's interesting what the guilt does. You know, first, the guilt wants to say, okay, come on, just pay it. It's not that much for me. Plus, he said that. He said, look, for you, it's not that much. Right? So he reflected my thought. You know, he reflected my my thought that that, um, that I, I, I have a lot, I shouldn't have a lot, and therefore I should give it to him, you know? So once, so there's the guilt. And then the next thing that comes is I get angry at him. So whatever the ego is trying to do is take the guilt and, and appease it and push it back down. And then when it goes back down, obviously it, it, it grows more, it's like a fungus. So there uh, I said, okay, here's the anger, Here's the guilt. Um, you know, those are the, the, the two typical ones. And, um, and then I thought, you know, I have to see this guy in the light, that this scarcity he believes in. 
or that I project on him because he's just a reflection of my mom doesn't exist. And it's very difficult because then, uh, you know, uh, some, you know, my mind tells me, oh, you don't want to get into this new age stuff that you're going to now mind over matter, the whole thing. But it was nice because today in the meditation, I was explaining the ocean of light. I saw him literally, you know, go <laughs> and I even saw the hat go like this. And he went down, you know, into and dissolved into the light. So this is for me, you know, I, I mean, I wish I could say I'm at the state where I, I can see past the, past the image of my brother or whatever I see. Um, uh, uh, and, and, and just and, and just see the light, but but uh, you know these are the steps, the, mm -hmm. the exposure, and then and, and this this to me is the solution, you know. And I'm glad, Jeffrey, that uh, you know you you stressed that in the last two weeks already. Let's look at that chapter about the solution. We have a whole chapter. There is a solution, you know, in in twelve step, but. Um, so anyway, that was, uh, that, that's how, um, you know, it, I guess this is another thing. You know, even sometimes, like, I get really angry, and, and I know, and I give myself completely, and I was really, I said, okay, now here, I'm doing the lesson, you plop these people right in front of my eyes, so obviously I'm supposed to learn something. Like, what am I supposed to do now? And I think just that was what I was supposed to do. What am I supposed to do with this? You know, how am I supposed to treat this? And so I, and that's when I gave it. And then I said, you know, so I said, even though it feels like crap right now, but you're growing. You know, you're growing because you gave it up. And sometimes that feeling is not always like, you know, magic. It's like, yeah, no, there's these beliefs that we're keeping, you know, we're digging at. And this one that you're bringing up with, you know, the friend that continued to ask for money it was it was interesting because i was looking at my own my own stuff with that and it was this chapter where i read this one line that i shared with because you had had this thought you kept saying well he's this or you know you would have these projections going on with him and it's i shared this it was perfect because i shared in the morning with peter and Susanna, and she had something it's like it's always the same thing going on it was do not accept your brother's variable perception of himself for his split mind is yours and you will not accept your healing without his. It was funny because there's certain ones like even in the 12 step program when I was there, there was always this idea of, oh, this one's sicker than most, you know, or that one's sick. And it was like, it was funny. That was one of the first things from David. I read the, uh, the answer, the little pamphlet. And as soon as I read, he had rewritten the line of, you know, in 12 steps, they say, but for the grace of God, there go I. It's like this satisfaction, like, oh, I'm glad I'm not as bad off as that one. And it was like, he said, no there for the grace of God go I it's like bringing it back always you know to the mind and taking responsibility for sight that same section and you know I can watch that temptation to do the same thing and I started doing it after we had that discussion even you know throughout the house here or see when it's so quick to think that oh this one I had someone else showed up here for weeks and it was like oh someone else is in their wrong mind it's like well if I even go out to that point I'm done. <laughs> like I need, I need to pull it back immediately. And this, uh, this other part in the judgment of the Holy Spirit, you know, this is perfect too. Understand that you do not respond to anything, including the guy from Qatar's boat directly, but to your interpretation of it, he looks over at the boat, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and even the, your friend, you know, that response, cause you had a reaction, a pretty strong reaction. Like this guy's asking for money again. I told them I was going to have him come to a retreat. Like I said, you don't own him any of those answers. You could just say, I simply, I don't feel it. I don't feel guided to give you, give you the money. And it's like when your mind went into that explanation of, well, I did offer you this and that, you know, we you started to get lost and we started to work with that. But so this part here is understand that you do not respond to anything directly but to your interpretation of it. Your interpretation thus becomes the justification for the response. This is why analyzing the motives of others is hazardous to me. It's like, when I read that, it's like so often, you know, that idea <clears throat> of trying to analyze, even with your friend there, you were like, well, it's this or that. Whenever I try to get up into analyzing other people's motives, it's like, this is the, this is the gift of the, joining with someone and saying, 
you know, I don't know, you know, and then this section actually continues to go on to asking the Holy Spirit for the interpretation. The analysis of the ego motivation is very complicated, very obscuring, and never without your own ego involvement. And I think that was where we went with that when you started getting involved with, well, now I feel a bit of like uh, it was justification or I forget. It was like you felt like, oh, I want to not give them the money. It was like at first you were guided. You joined with me and a few others. And it was like your pattern was, no, just to give money and give money to not have to deal with it. And then you had the same thoughts. I have so much. He has so little. And that was reflected in it. But then it came back around on you and were like, oh, well, now I kind of don't want to give it to him. It's like this idea of how quickly the ego will get back involved and try to interpret the whole thing. And it's like this constant, this constant practice of handing it over. It's like. Yeah, because, you know, the, 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 uh, I mean, I want to give him the money because also I have a lot of guilt. I mean, you know, and I want to help him out and I want to think that, you know, I'm healthy. And, but, but there's always this guilt behind and he reflected that thought back to me. Look, look, you have so much and now you're not giving it to me. And you know, all the gratitude that uh, uh, before the thank yous, thank yous, you know, they went away right away. When I said no, it was whoa, you know, and, and, but, but that's all my, my mind. And I'm glad you, you, you brought that up again. But then there was a moment where I got really pissed off and then I said, um, and then it happened on text, and, I, and he said, "Will you please reconsider?" And I said, "No." And then he just responded, "Okay." Thumbs and then up. I'm telling him, I was, you know, I was almost hoping that there would be a conflict. Yeah. You know, I could get mad and, and say, you know, that I could get mad. And this is also something I have to look at: is all that uh, addiction to drama? You know, I. I you know, this, there was a, there was going to be a, 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 a possibility for drama where I was going to come, come out right, you know. And then the other thing that happens when you say no, when I say no, it's uh, that, you know, I want people to understand why and to say, you know, it's okay you said no, and I understand. Because, again, that's to appease my guilt. But the whole thing is you know there's so much guilt in me and that means you know this was this was a great uh um great healing uh experiences for the guilt but there's a lot of other stuff that comes out that you know that i look at and i go mean, whoa and i find them you know when i look at them like that there's there's a shame attached so why do you want conflict now but you know then the shame the minute I was able to share it with you, and you said, "Yeah, that's it's good to see that," and uh, and also, you know, once I know it's just my ego, and that I'm not my ego, whatever it says, and I learned that pretty early on. In in um, you know, once I started to to get a hunch that I was a, a, a much of a much uh, a different essence than what I thought I was. And, and it helped me really to see, you know, Eckhart Tolle, 10 years ago when I was reading it, you are not your ego. And that's such a relief. So any thought I can have, is, uh, I just tell you, because it's not me anyway. So, so that, that um, but yes, a lot, of, a lot of little things come up. And that's what's so interesting in going deeper and deeper and deeper, seeing what comes up, you know. Yeah, you talk, you talk about conflict and this addiction to conflict. The next paragraph in the 12-step book that we have is another one of the promises that we're so familiar with. And it says, we have ceased fighting anyone or anything, for by this time, sanity will have re returned. And I always change the words from, you know, because we, we think we're addicted to alcohol or drugs or any of those things, but it's actually, it is the drama, it is the conflict, it is the addiction to, you know, as David would say, to the hypothetical thinking or to the timeline, to linear time. But all that is, is conflict. It's like, that's what it's creating. So it's like, we will well, seldom be interested in conflict. If tempted, we recoil from it like a hot flame. We react sanely and normally, and we will find this has happened automatically. We will see that our new attitude has been given us without any thought or effort. It just comes. <clears throat> it's like every time I read those, 
those, uh, those promises. It's like, that's why I'm doing it. That's why I go towards, you know, picking up the phone again. I, I had shared in the last show that I meet with Jason, you know, in the morning and at night and each morning, if there's anything or at night, it's like, I have to, anytime like something comes up, we call it in 12 steps, a spot check inventory. You know, they actually talk about that in the 12 and 12, which is a 12 step book and traditions. And anytime something comes up, cause I can't afford to leave any of that on my mind. And that's why you've been calling me a couple times a day because things are coming up with your, your friend or anything that comes up. It's like, it's just disturbing my peace. And by doing that, by being willing to, you know, and I'm just even getting into a deeper practice of watching how my own interpretation is still there. Like, even when I go, I'll go into Jason's room or, you know, go outside to sit with him and I'll, I'll bring, and it's like, I have to pray. Like, as I walk out, like leave my interpretations behind because it's like, I can't, you know, this is the come with holy empty hands. It's not talking about anything in the world. It's talking about my ideas, my interpretations of what I think the world is. If I can let those go, that's where the peace comes. So it's like when I walk into those situations, it's like, okay, I don't know what's best for me. I don't know what, how to interpret this. And sometimes it's, what are you seeing? What are you seeing in me? You know, and you were really open with that. You were like, I know this is a deep pattern when it started to cycle around and you weren't sure if you made the right decision, you joined with others and, you know, prayed with them. And it was like, you know, all we can do is come ultimately to what we feel is the best thing to do and not judge it. But it's like, it's this process that really is all it's about. It's about coming together, you know, and this is what, you know, I got so emotional one time in a meeting and I actually had a hard time expressing emotions in meetings when I first went in there you know, cause you're in a room with, you know, sometimes 120 people and, you know, it's become a lot easier now, but you know, I'm in community and it becomes more natural. But I was in a room in this guy and this was after I had found the course and I went back home for a week and I went with one of my, my good uh, friends there. I went to a meeting with him and this guy, he was like, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in this. And, you know, you've met those guys in the rooms. They just, they have this atheist outlook and they're not willing to even change any bit and this guy goes but there is one reason i'm here and he goes because i realized when i watched the way this program you know this fellowship work i realized it's where two or more are joined and he said it just like that in the room and i was like whoa <laughs> like that's straight from the course but that's really all it is, is that we're doing is it's like i can't do this alone because truly I'm not alone. And by actually practicing this is the only way I'm going to come into an experience of it. Otherwise I won't be able to sit and meditate my way to heaven, you know, and heaven is a state of mind. So it's like, I have to actually practice this. I have to practice moving towards my brother, moving towards you, Jason, Susan, whoever it is, and especially when there's a conflict that arises, it's like, okay, you know, I can move away or I can, I always had this analogy. Life's like this video game, you know, back in the day, the old video games, you have one joystick and a button and these things are coming down the screen at you. You can move out of the way. It's going to go by, but like those old games, it's going to come right back down the top again. It might look different. But it's going to come back down. I have to face it and hit the one button and one button is accept or forgive. I have to actually look at these things in my own mind in order to move through them. So thank you, Frank, for being that person for me across the world. This you know, also, um, we have uh, this um, this thing in our, our relationship with uh, you know, living miracles that uh, we don't. It's very important that we don't get into the unholy alliance when we start talking. Because I can explain the stories. So oh, that's not right. You know, we go straight to the truth. You know, right. and that's a huge gift because um, you know sometimes the way that the, the, the story can be presented or, or we don't mishear it. You know, we just go go straight to it and and. Uh, uh, for me, um, it's just sometimes frightening to see how I, I, you know, with everything that I know, how I react to people and how it affects how, you know, I can get into the judgment, into the, the feelings and, and uh, like what happened yesterday. And, um, and Yeah, and, Frank, we actually are running out of time here. Okay. We're at the okay. end of the show, but, uh, but I think you may be uh, hanging around and you might be... Uh, might be pulled on to the show with Jason and David later on. So okay. that's very exciting. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much, Frank. And uh, yeah, we will, uh, <laughs> we'll see you later. See you later. Thank you, everyone. Bye.
we'll yeah. see you in uh, – actually, we won't be back in two weeks. It'll probably be a little bit longer. But we'll see. Frank will actually maybe be back here in Utah because he's going to be flying back across the ocean. So we'll be back in studio together, which will be a gift. So – all right, back to you, Kristen.